we will relinquish any control that we may think that we have during this discussion tonight, God. Lord, we ask that every person who is on this call, God, has come on one accord, Lord, to speak about the dangers of illicit drugs, oh God, that we each may teach, pass on some guidance, some knowledge, some understanding, Lord. But we thank you right now, God, and we ask that this lesson tonight, God, would be a moving lesson that it will teach us, oh God, and, and help us to deal with situations that somebody else may know that somebody else is dealing with God. So we ask right now, God, as we move forward, oh Lord, that you would have your way tonight, God, and that this may be the beginning of a great year, God, in 2024, Lord. So bless everyone on this call. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen right. again. All right, Rick. You, let's turn it over. All right. Well, fellas, Jeff, um, were you are you uh local still or nah um I um uh I got out of California, man. Okay. Yeah, but the checklist okay. is too big, man. It's too big, man. <laughs> I'm in I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, man. It's okay. beautiful. Thing, so like, man. All right. So uh yeah, um I was really uh Honored and I'm blessed to be asked by Leon to, to to talk to you guys and my fellow brothers and and and, and arms and my fellow brothers in Christ. It's an amazing thing. Uh, what's happened in my life this last six years and four months? October 2017, October 9, 2017, is the last time I uh, used and I was drinking a half a gallon of vodka, taking 20 to 30 pills a day. And more if I can get and, and drinking more if I can get it, you know. Um, I was a quote unquote functioning addict. I was a foreman on a construction crew, um, and I just stayed high all the time. And and uh, man, um, I, I I was high for thirty four years. I counted the years the other day. Thirty four years of using and drinking and. And everything else that comes with it, man. Um, I I got a divorce after 13 years of marriage, and uh, shortly after that divorce, I got the uh, got a real you know. I just I just said to heck with everything, heck with everybody, and I went and I started hanging out with the homies, and I started doing what homies do. You know, I was I was collecting, you know, I was collecting for the local drug dealer. I never had to do nothing because everybody knew who I worked for, so I never had to do anything. But I was also doing some things. I don't know if I ever told Leon this, but um, I was running guns from. And I'm not bragging, man. This is I, I get I get uh, I get scared just thinking about it. I was running guns from uh, from Chula Vista to L.A. from time to time, um, and I was just out of my mind, you know, um, and trying to so badly control everything, you know, control. Uh, who control people, control my feelings, control my thoughts, you know, uh, as far as uh, what I thought was right and what was wrong, you know, um, and I was right. And I was a sergeant in the army for five of the eight years I was in. And um, I was a U.S. Army sapper, um, a combat engineer. And, uh, and so when I got out, uh, 1988, um, I thought I could still act like that, man. You know, I thought I could still act like that. I was on the Czech border for five years. Um, if any, of, some of you guys know what that is, the Iron Curtain, and um, that's when I started using. Uh, that's when I started drinking a lot. Um, started using uh, what was called X one twelve. It was a liquid meth. Um, and then uh, after eight years in the army, I got out because I had two kids. And I wanted to just live a normal life, right? So I got out, and what I do? I, I went back uh, to hanging out with the guys I was in high school with, uh, and they were all into cocaine and the meth and uh, drinking, partying all the time. And that's what ended my marriage was drugs. Was the meth got involved in my marriage, and that just my kids were ten and thirteen. My son was born in Germany. I mean, beautiful kids, man. I mean, uh, they didn't deserve this uh, this life. And because of my lifestyle and my 
ex-wife because she started she never did any drugs man but she wanted to be part of uh of of our party group so she tried it and it just within a year of her doing it we were done we were divorced we were together 15 married 13 and those poor kids man both of my kids my daughter who's 40 now and my son who's 37 ended up in prison too my daughter actually uh got a strike in this state she lives in montana now but thank the lord both of my kids man i can't i can't say this enough both of my children are now working in recovery too <laughs> my daughter is in montana she's a ceo's uh, personal assistant uh for uh it's called par ministries power of abundant recovery up in uh, montana and she goes all over the dakotas the midwest up there uh, and, 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 and puts on events for them. Um, and my son, he works for a, a company called MFI. Uh, he's a, he's a recovery counselor for, uh, uh, it's a local Riverside County, uh, San Bernardino County area, uh, recovery place. Um, and he works for them. Um, and sorry, you know what? And all I can say is this, the only way all of this could have happened with, there's no doubt in my mind that God had his hands on us the whole time. My daughter, I had to kick doors in, man, in Riverside to find her a couple of times. Her mom would call me from Montana. Where's your daughter? You know, I can't get a hold of her. And I'm like, okay, so what I do? I did what I do. You know, I went and started kicking doors in. And and, and my daughter was uh, shooting up meth. And uh, she was born on my birthday, man. <laughs> Oh man, she was born on my birthday. And so, uh, man, you know, to, to deal with that, I, all I did was do more drugs. I just got higher, you know, I didn't, I, I did finally find her. And then she, uh, she, she moved back in with her mother, um, or she moved up, excuse me. She went into rehab. That's what she did. She went into rehab and then, um, uh, she started doing NAs and stuff, so she's doing amazing now. Uh, then she moved to Montana years, uh, a few years ago. I got kind of turned around there on the story. But anyway, what I was getting at is this. Is the lifestyle that I was leading, my kids got into it, and they both went to prison. But I just, there's no possible way any of this could have changed but by the grace of God. One thing about my daughter and my son, they know Jesus, man. They know Jesus. And, you know, in my recovery, I know there's there's something that, you know, there had to be a spiritual connection. I knew that, you know. Um, and, and they tell you, you know, there's got to be some, there's got to be some bigger than yourself that you, that you can, uh, you know, uh, look up to or that you can communicate, you know, that you could have as a foundation, you know. Um, and I already knew, I already knew it was the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. I, uh. I went to prison in 2001 for a year and a month. I went to the only Christian based facility in the state. Tell me God's not working in my life this whole time, man. I went to the only Christian based facility in the state in Adelanto. It was called Maranatha, which translate as we know, and to come soon, Lord Jesus. And I went to this program to, uh, to this, to that prison, which had a program side and a regular side. The program site offered me a free video home a month and a free phone call home a month. This is in 2001 now. So, yeah, we had uh, VHS still. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and so uh, I was able to send a video and, 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 and get a free phone call. So, but in order to do that, you had to go to five classes, you know, lifestyle classes, drug and alcohol uh, uh, classes and, 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 uh, different classes that they offered there at the prison, but you had to go to five a week. Well, I ended up getting, tell me God, God is just, man, I can't explain this enough. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't uh, express enough how much he had his hand on me then. I didn't know. So the only class I could take, because I got a job as the warden's porter, it was the highest paying job in the prison for a prisoner, 34 cents an hour. I was bringing home 50 bucks a month, man. And I, you know what? I didn't have to ask nobody for nothing. <laughs> should have went, 
Should have, hey, should have went to PIA, man. Should have went to PIA. <laughs> no, you know no, God had me where He needed me. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is what happened. So, so I was good. I didn't have to call mom and dad for money, you know. Um, and then um, uh, the job I got working for the war, number with these beautiful women up in the front offices. I, you know, I, I got strip shirts on the way out to go work and strip shirts on the way back in. Well, um, and so the classes were all during the time I was supposed to be working. But there was one class that I could take, and that was at night. Anybody got a clue what class that was? Can anybody just think about it? God got me, got my undivided attention by the only class I could take was Bible study. Wow. Bible study. And that was the only class they offered at night. And they had different denominations, different churches come in. And I I had to go to these classes to get what I wanted. But before you know it, it started making sense to me. It started giving me hope. It started instead of that Bible being a book of I was raised a Catholic. No uh, you know, they're Christian brothers too, but I was raised a Catholic and it was a book of rules. I couldn't open that Bible, man, because I'm gonna see what everything I'm doing wrong, you know. When I was I was an altar boy, I was raised by a, a great Marine father that that uh, you know he was very he was very strict and, and and he raised six boys and a girl, and I'm the only I'm the only one that had any kind of issues. But besides that, um, it was a book of rules to me. I was raised Catholic, altar boy, all that catechism, uh, confirmation. But once I went to prison and I started getting fed from a Christian view, a true Christian view straight out of the Bible, it became a book of freedom instead of a book of of punishment and, uh, you know, uh, condemnation, you know. It, it, be, it became a book of freedom. And then the word that they were teaching me, the way, you know, it just, it just hit me. God put me where he wanted me. And I was like, God, are you serious? The only class I could take is Bible study. First of all, as a Catholic, I was like, eh, great, you know. But then I'll tell you what, man, things started making sense. And I became really involved and I be, and I just became, became convicted, not condemned anymore. I became convicted. I was also selling marijuana and tobacco on there because I had access because I went to the front every day. I had access to the front to where I could bring tobacco back and marijuana back. Well, it came one day after I started, I got baptized in a uh, in a prison laundry cart. And <laughs> right, me too. <laughs> me too. In a yellow one. <laughs> there was a blue one. There's a blue one, man. <laughs> well, did, did they submerge you? Tell us, did they submerge you? Did they just stick your head in there? What they no, just... no, no. I went all the way under. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All hey, the way. You know what? Let me, let me ask you a question. Let, let, you know, you're bringing up a, a whole lot of great, great points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and I know that we're talking about the dangers of illicit drugs. You know what I'm saying? And, and and right off the top, you just, I mean, just off the top, you hit about four or five just hardcore was a how it not only did it control you, but it it affected your family, it affected your marriage, it affected your children, it affected your job, your ability to to go out and do things, and it, it affected you where you wanted to go out and commit other things to keep the habit going. I mean, just kind of touch bases on, on, on some of the dangers. I mean, just, you know, you you've been hitting it, but... But I mean, yeah. then again, like you said, I mean, uh, you you hitting on a whole lot of good stuff, or you know, hit us with it. Let's get real, then. You know, um, I've seen, uh, man, I've been to the to the what they call the the trap houses, right? You know, mm. uh, and, and and I've seen families, man, living in squalor, and I'm talking little kids and stuff, and somebody shooting up in the next room, and just smelling that smell of just disgusting yeah. do and dirty clothes and laundry. No power on, no uh, water on, you know, kids living there, you know, and, 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 and it's in that same house. I walked in one day, man, and I seen these kids and I was like, it, I was one of the guys with a couple other ladies that we would take the kids down to, I lived in Lake Elsinore, just to get them out of there, take them down to the lake and stuff. 
And uh, we went down to the lake and we came back. And uh, I asked for, uh, I asked for this brother of mine. Um, hold on a minute. His name's Mike, Mike Salazar. And I go, uh, where's Mike? Oh, he's in the room in there. I went back there and there he was with a needle hanging out his arm, man. Dead. And I had these kids right here. You know, this was a little one bedroom apartment, you know? And I'm like, oh my God. And, and they, the mom and Mike and uh, the kids all stayed in the one bedroom. So the kids were wanting to go get their toys and stuff. And oh my God. Uh, to, to convince them that they didn't need their toys at that time. I mean, there was something going on. And then we had to, uh, uh, luckily they got the kids out of there. Um, they convinced me to go get some ice cream or something. I don't know. And then next thing you know, somebody had to call the cops. Nobody was, everybody was afraid to call the cops. Everybody was afraid to call the ambulance because you know why? We're all dirty. I ain't trying to get busted, you know? And yeah, there he was. He stayed in that room for probably six, eight hours before somebody, uh, one of the neighbors <laughs> went ahead and called and we all split. That's the thinking. That's where your mind goes, man. Your mind goes to, man, that drug is so much more important for me to be, to have to get, you know, involved with any police or, or, or try to help him even. I didn't even check his pulse, man. You know? Um, uh, so I just knew he was dead. And he was. Um, but the the thinking the stinking thinking, man. A normal person? Check this out. About three years ago, there was a man laying out here in front of my, my, my apartment. My grandson seen him laying on the ground. And he goes, Doctor, how come he's laying on the ground? I go, what? I looked down and I ran down there. This is how God works. Man, I was able to revive that man. Because of what? My sober mind. My, the the not having those drugs in my head to to convince me, man, I was Satan. You know, I came out of the army and I became one of Satan's best soldiers, man. You know, the way I was thinking, the way I was doing things. Uh, I mean, come on, both of my kids ended up in prison because of the drugs. You know, um, I've seen death because of it. I've seen uh, family split up because of it. I've seen uh, you know good men go to prison. You know, until they get that that stuff in them, man. And they and, and 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 the illicit drugs, okay, now now they got fentanyl. You know? That stuff, man. That stuff's off the chain. Okay. Part of my deal is I am a certified peer support specialist now. I've been doing counseling and reco and I'm a recovery coach. I've been doing this work for the last six years. Um immediately after I uh I, even before I graduated from the program, the star program, I started working at RI International. And I started seeing, and I was working with homeless, and I was working with people that were on drugs and, and mental health issues. And um, I became, you know, uh, it was this, what they call a safe haven. And um, it was right downtown Riverside, off Hewlin. And there was probably four, five, six hundred, I'm saying, yeah, probably six hundred homeless people right there on Hewlin and, and by Chicago, underneath the, the freeway bridge there. And all those people, they were right outside the gate where I worked. I've seen people die so many times on that street because they started, uh, because they shot up or somebody stabbed them or because that's where the mind goes, man. Just Satan has his hold on this, you know? And, and I just, thank God, before I went to work every day, I would just pray, pray for the, the people that I was working with. I had 25 residents that I was responsible for, and I prayed for the staff, and I prayed for those people on the street. And, and and honestly, one of the biggest prayers I had was, please let me live for them tonight. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I witnessed a girl having a baby right on the street. She caught her own child. And then... Well, did we lose I think we lost him. Yeah, it just I think it just froze up. Yeah, okay. Let me get him back. Okay. He probably just, just a quick, you know, a little flood. Oh, we we lost you, you for a minute. Rick, I'm going to jump in here for a minute because, I, you know, 
you know, Reverend Wolf, that's a real question. And, and I've, I've been doing this work, working with people for addiction for a long time. The part that bothers me, especially as somebody who's been working in the ministry, churches, and we, we talking about reaching people, the biggest battle I see, even in America, an epidemic, has to do with addiction. Yes. And and we, we're not addressing it like we should be. I have conversations with people, clergy, professionals, politicians, and, and everybody wants to skirt over the, the, the subject. We're, people are making serious money off of treating people, but sometimes even not treating people. Yes. So, I, I mean, for me, it's, it, it is war. And it's a spiritual battle. Oh, yeah. When I work with people, I'm kind of I'm working with with in Hemet right now outside of the VA, working with this company, helping people struggle with addiction. And I do believe because these are the most amazing people I've ever worked with. When they get sober, when I know their story from childhood, the trauma that they went through, the pain that they're running from. It, it, when I study the Bible, I'm like, wow, and we're missing it because we're so busy looking at the way things should look. Right. What did people, he say? That's people a judgmental thing. Yeah, in yeah. the behavior, it's, 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 it's sometimes generational. Yeah. And we're even missing that in our schools, in families. Child is dealing with behavioral issues, and, and, and nobody has looked at the fact that the parent or grandparent or somebody in the family, their behavior from their drug use affected this child. That's so for me, I'm advocating for, for these programs to have family. That's one of the biggest things that I do. And Rick, Rick do you mind me sharing kind of some of what I've, our experience was? Yes. When I met Rick, he, he he's not the man that, that you see right here. No. When you Tell talk about spirit, that that even he he in his <laughs> he was already off physiologically off of meth. But the thing that the brain, his behavior, he was his energy was wearing me out. <laughs> I mean, and that's what people don't people need to become more educated. His energy was wearing me out. So I knew <laughs> that the reality is that we needed to figure out, and, and, and God is the center. You know, Definitely. I'm a clinician. They tell us, hey, these strategies and all of this stuff. But the reality, the people that I know who really sustained and gotten healed and moved forward, they figured out. That there's no way I can do this without God. No way. Because it's, it's too big of a battle. I I met Rick's mother in, in our family program. When Rev Wolf, when you ask about how this thing, illicit drugs, affect, it ain't just taking the, the, the per attic out. When I met uh -huh. Rick's mother and I love her, I call her mom. <laughs> you know? We, yeah. I mean, Leon's she, your favorite black child. She, she, she <laughs> is, when she came to our program, she, she didn't, working with the family, she thought, like a lot of us, culturally, right? Mm -hmm. Culturally, we, we yeah, oh, like, they, they you just need to stop. Yeah. Go to church. Yeah. Call the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's all great, right? Mm. But God does, and that's what I tell people, that's, that's great. People who, who just stuck on religion. But the thing is that how do we translate that to real life? Yes. Right. right. Because if somebody's hurting, you can say whatever you want to say. And they're they're getting that substance use. And a lot most of the time it's coming from the family structure, that that pain. Yeah. Well, you know, just, go ahead, Ram. You know. No, I wanted to ask, you know, uh, uh, Rick, the question that, sure. you know, why you, you know, because one of the things that, you know, that is, that is very real, we know that the struggle is real. You know what I'm saying? That this is not no fabricated, just some out of your mind, this thing grab hold of you and it can stay with you forever. 
and it can be generational, like uh, Dick Glove was saying, you know, as time goes on, because what we see, we kind of mimic, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's just the way that it is, you know, no matter what it is, if you got a bunch of uh, very, very good, talented, uh, uh, say, golf players in your family, uh, trumpet players, you know, you go, you're going to hear, you're going to do it all the time. And what you see, you get, you know what I mean? And and it's just, uh, I wanted to ask, you know, you to kind of hit, hit hit on the point of how how do you come to the realization that you know this thing has got a grasp on you and you know that I got to get away from it. How do you get away from it? Well, the first time when I got off of meth in 2001, they put me in prison. I looked up, I, I remember this day specifically, and I said these words. And I looked up, it was a rainy day. I remember the drops hitting my face. I was wearing my leather jacket, and I was in my $200 bucket car sleeping <laughs> in it. And I look up and I say, okay, God, either I'm going to die today or I'm going to go to prison. And I, and I looked up and I guess he heard me. So he put me in prison, man. That mm. next day, on that day, <laughs> I was in jail, and I ended up going to prison from there. And I was like, "Hey, so now this is real, man. He saved my life by putting me in prison. Then to be sent put to that Christian facility, I was like, okay. It opened my eyes. It opened my heart. It softened my heart. Opened my mind. That's what happened. Um, and the realization came." When I got sent to the only Christian facility in the state, and 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 and, and, and what I what I was doing um, in there, selling okay, here it is, selling the drugs and selling tobacco, just like I was doing on the outside. The Lord convicted me. He said, "Come on, man. You know, I, honestly, this was a conversation. This is what He told me. This is what I heard. Come on, dude. What are you doing? You're doing." The same thing you were doing out there, you're getting better at it because you're doing it in front of cops and everything right here next to you, and they're and, and they're trying to search you, and you're still doing it. So you're getting better at it. This is where you're gonna go when you get out. Did you you know you're gonna you're gonna still be doing the same thing during the Bible studies? Um, uh, I heard this. Uh, this became my life verse: Philippians three thirteen and fourteen, which says. I do not claim to attain all, but one thing I do is I leave those things which are behind, behind, and I strive towards the goal and the upper calling of God through Christ Jesus. When I read that, I'm like, man, that is me. That is me. I can do that. I can let that go. I mean, I lived so long for survivor's guilt from the military situation, you know, that others died. And I'm like, why me? You know, all the stuff that's happened to me, uh, how come I'm still here? Well, I know now. He's given me a purpose-driven life now, you know. Um, and 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 I hold on to that life first, knowing, knowing I don't have to hold on to that stuff, man. You know, I don't have to hold on to that stuff because Jesus' blood covers me. When I when I realized that the Lord looks at us through the the blood of Christ, that blew my mind. That blew my mind. And we live by his grace and mercy. I didn't understand that until I went to prison instead of dying. Until I went to a Christian-based prison and started getting the word put into me. And then with that word being baptized and knowing that I'm being born a new man. And being a new man and understanding what that actually means is just... I can't even explain, and you know, I'm sure so many brothers can understand that. Um, but to just know that, uh, uh, look at me through the blood of Christ, see, and I'm saying, man, I don't deserve that, but you know what? He tells you, you are mine, and. You know, in the military, we got your six, right? <laughs> God's got our every hour, every second, every minute, man. And and to to live that way now, 
I don't need those drugs no more, man. You know, mm-hmm. the illicit drugs, uh, like I said, um, it's destroying families. It's destroying lives. It's taking people from our table and killing them. Um, and, and and like you were saying, Leon, the the home, the families, um, this has got to be. Thank God, my my family, uh, my my kids uh, know Jesus, man, because I couldn't do it. I I'm a man, you know. I was a sergeant in the army for five years. Can I control what they do and and how they live their lives? And, no, the only one that can do that is we know who, you know. And there's no two ways about it. Um, I tried everything else, you know. You, you know, trying something over and over again, expecting different results. That's the definition of, of uh, insanity, right? Trying the same thing over and over, expecting different results. I finally realized <laughs> that. Yeah, you froze up. You froze. Yeah, not. Nah. Mm-hmm. You know the devil don't want to hear the truth. You know. What oh I'm saying? man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, yeah. no, no. If we were talking about something else, you're not kidding. <laughs> uh-uh. like, I dare y'all. Y'all supposed to be. You guys supposed to be superficial. Yeah. You yeah, supposed no. to be just not yeah. talking about the real. Man, that just amazing. You know, he he pause because he don't want certain things to come out because when things start getting into the atmosphere. It starts changing things, right? So that's why we have to speak these things, you know what I'm saying? And and when you start speaking and you hear the word, then it becomes powerful because you start gravitating to it. And now you want to make a change in your life. But if you never hear it and nobody encourages you and tell you, then you're just blind. You're just going to be running out there. You know, there's so many scriptures in here, you know what I'm saying? And, and and I guarantee you that if you hold on to this this these words, you know what I'm saying, and start believing this word, you know, knowing that the enemy is who he says he is, you know, we know him to be an adversary, you know what I'm saying? We know yeah. him to be a liar, you know what I'm saying, the father of all lies. We know him to be deceitful and dishonest and, and chaotic in our lives because that's what he wants. You know, it says that he, mm-hmm. he seeks to destroy us. He's like a roaring lion, right? You know, seeking who he may devour. So we know what he wants to do. He wants to ruin our lives. And, and if he can take uh, the things that don't supposed to be with us, you know what I'm saying? And it says, it's, it's so crazy because as we were talking, I was thinking I was in Peter, then I jumped into John because we know in John it talks about, you know, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then in 1 Peter 5, it says that be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour, right? And that's what he wants to do. He wants to take everything that we have, right? And he wants to destroy it, right? And he'll destroy your life. He'll destroy your family's life. He'll destroy anything of legacy that you're trying to build, right? And that's this whole monster thing that this enemy is trying to do with us. But once you get hold, and that's why I just love your testimony and and, and, and the power that the Spirit of God has worked in your life, because now you can sit here, you can speak with authority and power and say, you know what, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? You ain't just saying those words. You're walking and you're believing and you're trusting and you know it to be true, right? And so you yeah. standing here, hey, we on the battlefield, not just out there, you know, in the Marine Corps. So I'm talking, we on this certain battlefield every day of our lives. This struggle is real. This this walking, this kingdom building thing. So, man, hey, man, glory be to God, man, just listening to you because it's so important that uh, 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 that we, 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 we know that the things that we go through. And I like what you're saying because... It's important, and we want to keep getting that out there. You know, men talking about it and strengthening one another and believing that, hey, just because you're a man, you're supposed to walk stronger and not have these things going on in your life. But that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to destroy man and manhood and and man's in charge of their families. And if he break you and shatter your foundation, everything else is going to crumble because there's not going to be nobody else strong enough to handle what's going on. So, hey, man, you got to keep fighting, man. And, you know, hey. But go ahead. I ain't gonna keep talking. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead one and get it. One of the one of the, one of the, coolest, one of the coolest things that was ever told to me was said to me was by Leon. It, Tommy. Fight, you gotta fight. But he he man, I tell you what, I was bouncing off the walls, man. I was, you know, this this is let that go now. But Leon told me, Rick, things happen when they're supposed to, how they're supposed to. Because that's how it's written, man, you know. When Leon told me 
that things happen when they're supposed to, how they're supposed to. And once I became sober and I started listening and doing things <laughs> sober, when Leon said that, it's like, wow, it is God in central control. I don't have to. I don't have to take all this on myself. I don't have to figure everything out today. You know, I can figure it out. He'll help me figure it out when he wants to, how he wants to. And things will. Once I started following that, man, I've done nothing but move up as far as I was a recovery coach in a safe haven. Then I went to work in a, 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 a CRT. Um, uh, it's a. It's a uh, facility for uh, 18 to 26 year old with mental health issues, not anything to do with drugs or anything. I moved to there and I worked there for a couple of years. Then my last job, I was a case manager at a homeless shelter of all places. And I've just been going and, and now I'm waiting for an interview with, with the county. <laughs> um, so God has just used me. And you know what? One of the things that I got to do this last job I had, it was Lutheran Social Services. I got to use to use the word. I got to 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 to, to use the word and use my Christian uh, 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 and my Christian um, uh, knowledge and 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 let those guys know, man. You know, you know, I got to look at you guys. You know, they're coming off the street. They're still high. They're still, you know, they, I mean, they've been on the street for years. Um, and I got 70 guys there, <laughs> you know, two, two case managers. But you know what? God guided me. And not a one of them ever came against me or, or, or was violent towards me. Because it's a very volatile uh, 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 population. But you know what? God had me. I mean, That's the third one. Well, I know. <laughs> Maybe it's his connection. I think. I think probably it's the internet. Probably, probably yeah. it's the internet. You know, things. Are, so, uh, I get excited. You know that, Leon. Um, and and um, uh, where was I going to go? So I was able to use the word and 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 and, and my Christianity more there. And you know what? I got ways of doing it now. I've been doing it for almost seven years now. And I got ways where some companies say you ain't supposed to do that. Well, <laughs> I sneak it in. You know, I can get it in. And you know what? I'm willing to take the punishment. If, if you're going to punish me for doing that, so be it. God's got me. You know? Um, and that's how I truly feel. And that's what I do when I go to these places and, and I work at these places. Um, they, they told me, if they bring it up, that's fine. You know, okay, if they bring it up, believe me, <laughs> I'm going to blow it, you know. So we, anybody else have anything? Um, Tommy, Jeff? Yeah, I'm here. Brown? On what, on, on what topic? We just, I mean, <laughs> the, the topic is the dangers of of illicit drugs, but, um, you know, Rick was our, yeah. our speaker. Um oh. yeah. I mean, this is something real that we're dealing with. It ain't. It has not gone away. Um, but like, like the brother was saying, man, we got to tell people, man. You know. Um, but as far as you know, like you were saying, illicit drugs, man. This fentanyl uh, epidemic, another one that we have. Um, people, it the meth is being laced with. Uh, this stuff, and I've seen guys in some of my programs that within three or four months of using, starting to use that stuff, the meth that's laced now, they're they're doing karate chops in the air, and they're kicking at things, and they're spinning around, and they're yelling at their shadow, and it's like, wow, just a few months ago, this guy, I knew he was high, but now he's got this other stuff, man, and it, they're losing their mind. They're losing their mind out there, and and a lot more deaths are happening. You know, uh, and, and the only way, the only way, 
is for us as Christians, as, as Christian men, is to uh, to fight that battle and 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 be and be bold about it. Before, when somebody said they could see right through me, they used to tick me off. Now they say that I'm like good because I ain't got nothing to hide, and it is what it is. And you see, what you see is what you get. And God has given me that strength and that boldness in that in that uh, you know the fortitude, man, to 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 say something, you know, and, and and to be part of the solution, not just sitting there talking about it, but be part of the solution. There's, there's nothing like it. And you you know, and I I think you know. The importance for us, especially as men, to have difficult conversations. You know, a lot yeah. of times people, and, and today people get stuck in the emotions and we never get to discussions. Right. You know what I mean? So, so you know, Jeff, that's why I was kind of asking the question, because even, e even the fact of, you know, even like in, in the world that I'm in, even it, with the serious discussion with the legalization of marijuana. Oh. You, you know what I mean? I, I see, we know the history. We went to Colorado for a conference before it was legalized. Us providers, we already know the research was done. We knew what the product was going to look like if you're intelligent enough once it was legalized because we're in a capitalist country and there's a lot of money being made off of it. Revenue. So, so even now, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I might get my head bite off in my own family. Yeah. Or with some of the brothers. Yeah. Especially our, our, our veterans population. They're debating yes. stuff that they have no evidence or research on it. And we and I, we can see the physical results of how they think, how how the addiction escalate, how the health, uh, the health declines. I mean, what we're afraid to have these difficult conversations. So if we as men are afraid to have these difficult conversations, what's going on with our community? Right. For sure. And if we can't, oh, we're fighting before it's all over with, right? Arguing, right. nobody's listening to the other person, and we can't have these conversations for resolution. What's going on? What's going to happen with our children? Oh, oh, we're afraid to have these talk, talk about these, these subjects. That's 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 so true, Leon. I, I, you know, and that's that's where the boldness of 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 knowing the fact that he looks at us through the blood of Christ, uh, where we can. I mean, if you really think about it, how much more perfect can I be? <laughs> you know, in his eyes, how much more perfect can I be? So as long as I'm in the spirit, or the spirit's in me, and that's what I let shine through, and I have to, man. And, and now you're saying, you know, people do. They love to argue, like you said, the emotional part. Man, come on, Leon. I was, I was ready to box every time, man, you know. But but now that I've, I've, I've got the responsibility and, and I've learned through Christ that that how to go about it and how to be truthful without insulting anybody mm -hmm. or how to be truthful and, and, and having those hard conversations – in a manner with love, you know, um, and, and, and that's that's the thing is, is a lot of people, uh, if they hear another man say, I love you, man, you know, like me and Leon, we'll say, hey, I love you, man, you know, people are like, what the heck, you know, no, man, that's real. Abide these three, faith, hope, love, above all love, you know, and, 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 and there's no, there's nothing else that I can see. And I'm working in the field. And you do too, Leon. And I don't see any end. I just see more death and more destruction before anything else happens. You know, all we can all we can do, all I can do as an individual and a man in Christ is let people know the good news, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> in the meantime, right now, guys, I'm doing Uber because I got laid off in November and I'm waiting for this other job with the county um, to start. And in the where, where the passengers sit, sit, I'm bold, man. I got my Bible in the little pocket, and I got uh, a bookmarker. The Romans wrote, 
and I got that sticking up. And then every time somebody gets out, I go back there and make sure see if it's been moved or, you know, so I, I hope it, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, 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 and another thing I'll do is, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure that you brothers, man, the boldness is, is what we need to do as men. You know, we're so tough. You know, I was a sergeant in the army. I, you know, I ran my squad. Da, 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 da. You know, come on, man. Now I'm a soldier for God. I have to be because that's the only way I'm going to live. Otherwise, I'd be dead. He saved me to, 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 to be a light unto this world. All of us to be lights unto this world. You know, um, and, 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 and have the boldness to do this. Um, and, and the only way, uh, I could say that I can do it is by being of sober mind and knowing that I'm doing what I've been called to do and not doubting myself and going to him for all the decisions I need to make. Um, every decision I need to make, uh, uh, for, for career, uh, financially, whatever. I go to God first, which I never did before because I was in control, right? Well, we see how that ended up. So, um, hmm. uh, I don't even know what else to say about the illicit drugs, except that well, I mean, it's just. I think you 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 said, I mean, you shared who you are. Yeah. What your journey was. That's your testimony, and I think testimonies are are important. I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's when when, you know, this this subject was coming up, and I was thinking about you know PowerPoint or setting. It's just you know I I believe that God just said, hey. You, you you came to mind because it's real. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen I've seen the journey and I see I see where you are right now. When I see you and it's something about you men, and I'm looking at the men on the screen now who I respect tremendously. Um I see you gentlemen and how you are with your children and grandchildren. That's amazing. To I mean, that's just Rick. You was with your grandchild, Rev Wolf. I always see with your with your grandchildren. <laughs> you know, Tommy, your your life is your kids, and Jeff. You know, I, you always talk to me about your daughter. And uh, yeah, my, my my grandson here right now. Yeah, and and your grandson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, Rev Ralph. Um, that's encouraging to me because, like you said, Rick. I mean, the work that I do, the work that God has called me to do in the community, it, some, it's tough, you know, when you see families being destroyed and, and um, you know. Um, you know what? There's so no way. It's good like to see, you know, men who, who really, because it makes a difference. It can go either way. Like you said, Reverend Wolf. If the, the trauma that I went through when I was a child, I didn't acknowledge that my grandfather, but as I became older and wiser, how stable he was, the love that he was able to show made a big difference. And he was consistent until he left here. So he left me something to live with. That's huge. Uh, and so... Yeah. So when yeah. I when when I get I do get discouraged. Yeah. You know, when I'm having these conversations with with pastors, when I'm having these conversations with with leaders and politicians and and, and or or family members who have influence and it, you know, and other things take precedence, it's you know, it's it's not attention for and God is, I guess he's made it this way because everybody that's on here tonight, I, I respect you guys tremendously. Thank you, Leon. For how you, you know, some of the challenges. That we love you, Leon. And, and you, and you still stand in and represent, you know, being there for your children and grandchildren. I know what that means, you know, because I didn't have either one of my parents, you know. And but I didn't acknowledge it when I was young, but my grandparents they stepped in the gap. Absolutely. And there was other people who stepped who I was able to see 
So it makes a difference. So I, I know if I feel this way sometimes, y'all might feel this way. Oh, I know, man. I, I, I get I, I, frustrated, <laughs> whatever. So I just want to encourage, I just want to encourage everybody that's here because it's encouraging for me to be able to listen, to share Rick, what you share, everything you share tonight. It makes a difference. Absolutely. You know, I got one, you know, and I, you know, you know, we talk about illicit drugs and we know that illicit drugs are illegal drugs. But we know that the system itself has now, you know, you got children at school, they pushing it on, oh, you know, every, every time you turn around, you need to take this. You got a bad child. You got a yeah. sickness. Here's some more drugs. They, put, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now, and, and I heard you was said something about the whole entire, you know, all these sanctuaries that we have, you know, these weed houses and everything. So, you know, it's like. You know, you got some cities right now. They like walking zombies. Yes. Man, you know what I mean. You know yeah. what I mean. You, you you walk in, you say this is the land of the dead, man. You know you like you were saying. You know what I'm saying, Rick. You know you can go down to certain parts of the city. You'd be like, God, man. You know it just looks like just you know the whole entire thing is just in one big old dream state. You know you and so uh, and it's like they don't care. You know. Yeah. Hey, hey can I can I share something with you guys really quick? Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. We're, we're, we're talking about illicit drugs and stuff, right? Okay, uh, I, I, I ain't, you know, I, I'm not from the mud, but I'm from the dirt, right? Okay, and and uh, San Bernardino is, uh, um, the, what, I, what I see and saw was a lot of homeless people, okay, on those drugs, right? But those homeless people are on, they're, they're supposed to be on medication, right. okay? They don't have their medication. So they're using drugs, man. There was a, there's homeless people every 50 feet. Every 50 feet, man. Go down there on baseline and water me, man. Go, go just do, oh, yeah. do whatever. Right? Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, they, and it's just it's just, it's it's amazing, man. Because I, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, what are they doing with Patton State Hospital? I'm I'm mm. two thousand miles away. I, I hear that uh they're gonna do something with the homeless or something like that. I don't know. I hope so. Right, because the they need to do it, man. It's it's bad, and and, um, and the drugs that that the the, the, the drugs, uh, um, uh, uh, the women bring the bring the uh the drugs because the the women bring the men, and 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 the, they they it's an economy. You 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 got gas stations down there. You got liquor stores. You got motels. You got ninety nine cent stores. You got everything that you need right down there, man. And it's going down down there, and it's not going to stop. Those people down there are on. They're 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 they're, they're uh, substituting um, crystal uh, water. That day, man. Yeah. Instead of instead of what they're supposed to be having, and 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 their families have given up. Yeah, they have. You know what? Up. Society yeah. has given up, man. Hey, listen. I they're like, hey, I just feel like I'm on. Okay, this is a good, this good, just as good a place as any to live. On the sidewalk, big dog. You know what, Jeff? That's where I just came from. Was from uh, Lutheran Social Services, which is a homeless shelter. Uh, we had forty beds there. Then we multiplied that. We went to seventy. Now they got funding. I found out it did come through, <laughs> and uh, okay. some funding came through. And now they're going to have like hundred and fifty beds. But it's when I was there, I was a case manager, so there was a program. Um, the problem is is this program, you know, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, can't make a drink, right? But but another thing is this, is we can only, they got to want it, you know? Um, and, and, and another thing too is, 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 I know when I was homeless for 15 years, I didn't want nobody to, to see me. I didn't want to be on the, on the grid. I was good. I was okay with being homeless for 15 years because I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah, until no I, responsibility. Right. Until I came to the realization that, man, you come from a good family. You've got people that love you. And see, that's a lot of a lot of the problem, too, is like like Leon, Leon was saying, it starts at home, man. It really does. And not just that. Families give up on families nowadays. And it's so easy. It's such a common thing. And that's because God's not here. Now, God's not there. I mean, you know, in their families and and. and that's the only way I can explain it. And it, it. It goes back to, to me, and, and it's frustrating because we got churches. We show up in churches. We yeah, we we Bible preaching and Bible teaching, 
But when it comes down to it, and I hear this from people who are homeless, who, what you're talking about, Jeff, and it does break my heart. Yes. Because it does it's, start it's with, it does start with us. It's because bad. if if you if God tells me to to you said it, it's easier to give up on somebody than it is to pray for them and fight for them. But our society has gotten so so you know, it, we've accepted all of it. So so the account if we don't want to be accountable ourselves. If us as brothers, we can't even talk with about getting emotional. If Reverend Wolfolk can't tell me something without me talking over him, or, or and he's confronting me about something I need to be confronted about, that's where the problem starts. Yeah. Because the reality is we, we can do something, but we can't wait for everybody else to do it for us. It's got to start with us. That's right. And I'm, that's right. I believe in my heart. That's why I believe in men being men. I've had some stumbling blocks since I've been here, Leon. I, I don't want to take too much time from Rick. Yeah. But, no, no, no. Um, no, go but, ahead. But, um, okay, when I got here, you know, uh, I want to pay my stuff forward, man, because I'm just going to uh, 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 give it up. 100, man. Y'all helped me out of a out of a, a, a hole, man, an excavator hole. <laughs> I was done, man, in and out of prison, all that, Rick. I was in and out of prison. I've probably been in every prison in the state of California, man. Yeah. Okay, and and is it for the grace of God that uh that that Mr. Leon Glover was there? pretty much right? Everybody, everybody that was there, right? So I get here, <clears throat> and I want to pay it forward, right? So uh, make a long story short, there are a lot of veterans. The, I'm a vet that's been in and out of prison. Okay, so that's where my passion is at. Okay, because the recidivism is just too much, right? Okay, so I get here, and uh, sure enough. It's the prisons. I live down the street from prison. Leah, I can tell you, there's prisons all over the street where I live at. Man. Home state, it's yeah. A lot. That's where they're I, making the money at. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But anyway, yeah. so I I I I, I wanted to um, volunteer at Doran Medical Center. Um, that's the uh, the VA, the local VA. All yeah. right. They didn't say nothing. They didn't call me back, man. So about a month later, I went back. Hey, uh, whoopty whoopty, wah, da, 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 right? And oh no, nah, man, we would have called you, man, and it said the other. So I said, okay, well, here's my, I ain't heard from them people yet, right? So okay, obviously my background, they don't want to mess with me because that's what happened at uh, Loma Linda at uh, Jerry Pettis. They didn't want... <laughs> mm. anyway. So okay, mm. that's fine. So so now I know these 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 men and women are getting out of prison, and uh, they're gonna do the same things that they've been doing. Okay, there are no. There is no infrastructure here that I know of for for men and women getting out of prison. Okay, illicit drugs. Yes, they're gonna go right back to it. They're gonna go right back to the streets. They're gonna do what they do. They're gonna do what they know. All right. Now, I've, I've, it's not stumbling blocks. It's okay. I, I, um, there's a there's a a, a, a pastor or a, a, a priest or something like that that's at the prison. I even know uh, uh, my one of my nephews. Uh, his wife's best friend is a CO. She works at the prison. Mm -hmm. I ain't got the number to the reverend yet. <laughs> well, I got a whole lot of numbers. You know I mean? I'm, I'm going to get you, so I'm glad you showed up tonight. That's why. Yeah. That's where I'm. That's where I'm moving to, man. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, my contribution is telling these men and women, you ain't got to do that. You know what I mean? It is not. It is not. It is not beyond your control. Is it gonna be some some BS in, in, in the midst of it? Yes, every day, every day you're gonna get some BS. The fangs and the and the claws come out, man. When you're doing something different, and that what y'all taught us, Leon. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> there you go, Rick. This is what yeah. I mean. This is it's what it is, man. So so you know, I can see it for what it is, but I'm not gonna stop. You know, uh, I need funding for what I'm doing. And I got a few ideas and stuff like that, you know. But yeah, man, it's 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 amazing how uh, um, <clears throat> society treats us. <laughs> we are, and, and and I hope I don't offend anybody, but we are. Uh, okay, let me put you like this, and I'll stop. Chino State Prison, Southern California. The sister girls that that work up there. 
Do you know what they used to call us? Come here, paycheck. Come here, come here, paycheck. Come here, let me talk to you. Because <laughs> they know we go in and out because of the drugs. Because that's what it is, the drugs, man. The drugs, right? So, and, and there's that mindset. Right, and then and then it goes to the to the homeless man. The homeless, the homeless that I see, some of them don't need to be homeless. They just don't want accountability. But other ones are mentally not there, dude. They're not there, and nobody gives a D A M. Right, they don't. It up. Well, I, that, you know, um, that's they are burnt out. <laughs> They're burnt out, man. You know, I was too. Uh, Leon can tell you when he first met me, man. Um, but I can do this. I can tell you this. I don't go to NAs, and I'm going to tell you why. Because my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has removed that illicit drug need or want from me. Period. I'm not downing NAs or AAs. It helps so many people. But that is just, uh, that's accepted in society. NAAA, uh, uh, what I mean by that is, is that's a program that's accepted. As far as like, and it, what's really hard is like, you can't go to NA meeting and say, uh, you can, but the look at you funny. If you say my, uh, a higher power, yeah. and then you say, I don't say Jesus Christ is my higher power, they look at you like, oh, 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 you know, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's one of those. Higher power. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, uh, God is get, got to get. We got to get God back in society, man. Um, and I know I'm 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 preaching to the choir here. Um, and 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 you know what you were saying about the homeless in San Bernardino, man. That's where I worked at the homeless shelter, man. I seen these oh. guys, and what was happening is they would do ninety days there in the program. They could they exit the program, and as long as they didn't do nothing too crazy. They could come back in 30 days. And that's what they do. And that's what they do. And now they just went from 40 to 70 beds. Now they're going to go to 150 beds. So that's what they're going to have. That's what it is. And unfortunately, they just got, uh, I don't know how many millions, $44 million grant or something um, for this place. And I got to tell you, man. Huh? And, and no, I got to no, tell you. Bad. It's 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 a it's a band aid. It's not, and I'm gonna tell you this is another reason because they're not allowing God to be in that as much as even though they are called Lutheran Social Services in Southern California. Uh, very rarely do you hear other staff or, or people talk to the to to the clients about that. I was told by several uh, by several. Um, clients or several residents there that, uh, you know, I was the only one that would talk to them about that or talk to them like that. They also knew what a little bit about my story, which was what one of my best tools was my story. So they can relate to me. Why other people didn't do that there? I don't know. Cause they're called loop of social services. So, you know, there's a, uh, almost an embarrassment sometimes it feels like to me. And that, that's, that's just sad, man. Um, and 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 that's the bottom line with as far as uh, what's really needed and, and as far as taking you know I don't know I I don't even know where I'm going now with this. Reverend, but Rampton, I, yeah. Reverend Ramp, did you have anything? I saw you type something that you know what a testimony. Did you have anything you want? Oh to yeah, do? my my yeah. my brother had a great testimony um, that needs to be heard. You know and. If God can deliver him, he can deliver someone else. Um, that's that's so. part of my uh, part of our, our mantra when you go to the peer employment training is IT, I'm the evidence. <laughs> I am the evidence that God is in, you know, that God can cure me, you know. Um, and uh, I'm the evidence that it can be done, you know. Um, I'm 61 years old now. And if this old guy can do it, that's what I tell a lot of these youngsters. And I tell a lot of the youngsters too, man, you guys are inspiring me because you are trying to give it a chance now. You're not waiting till you're in your fifties like I did. You know? Oh yeah. Um, Tommy, you got anything, bud? 
No, I just want to know how I can help. You know, I think, um, I mean, I got a sister-in-law that's uh, addicted right now. And we're trying to, I mean, nobody wants to tell her that, you know, yeah, you need to get some help. But then when I was talking to you, but you know, even if we want to get help, it's hard for her to get help. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Um, I'm retired. I mean, I'm here to help. Whatever. Any, I mean, any suggestions or whatever anybody needs me to do, I'm I'm all for it. Where I'm are you like, at? I'm in uh, Wildemar. Wildemar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm an addict. I'm at meth. Uh, seven months sober. You know, thank God that, um, I mean, I, I mean, everyone's got their, uh, you know, how God saved them, but I mean, God showed me the light too. I'm just got to lock myself in, into a mental hospital and, um, for somehow I, you know, I got, I got out of it, but I could have really screwed myself for my, you know, the rest of my life. I mean, I could have probably got a judge order or something once I was in the hospital, but I, man, it scared the shit out of me <laughs> and it woke you know, me up. Yeah. You so, know, um, seven months is a heck of a start, man. Don't sell yourself short. Thanks. No, no, and uh, I really believe that um, God has a mission for me. He just needs me to get better. And um, but the devil, he's scared of me. That's why he keeps messing with me because he, you know, keeps knocking on my door. But uh, he doesn't want me to come. You know, he doesn't want me to get out with that mission. Is this gonna be a good one? So uh, I'm just waiting, praying, and. Uh, you know, I'm glad I'm here with you guys. I mean, I think this is a cool brotherhood. So thanks for having me. But well, you got some more brothers now. Yeah, it's so cool. Rev, Rev Wolf and, and, gonna stand I hate by. to say, but uh, <laughs> we're all mostly Marines too. What's up? <laughs> huh? you, you got another jarhead on standby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Different <laughs> That's the deal. You're, you're, you're Rev Wolf, what? What did you just say? <laughs> Uh, you already you already know how devil dolls do it, you know. What I'm I saying? know, I know. Real, you know. Devil That's dog. right. <laughs> and not only was I devil <laughs> dog, I was a drill instructor. You know? Drill instructor. Hey, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Drill instructor. Drill instructor. Sergeant Warfolk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in the crazy day, you know. So, yeah. You know, I, I was a recruiter, so. Oh man! And you, you know, brought them to me, man, and I took care of. You know, you pulled them in, they, uh, they, and I made them devil they, dogs. Yeah, I've been calling you. Hey, yeah. please, my kid, he's got to go. Hey, yeah, but uh, you always remember their drill instructors, and never re remember the recruiters. So. But that's yeah. everything. It's just like yeah. we are right now. You know, the Bible says right. one man plants, another man waters. God brings the increase. Yeah, so, it's so we cool. talk to one another. We bring each other in. We tighten up each other. Then God speaks to us. Yeah, it increases what we're doing. So that's a great thing. You know, Amen that's to that. Yeah, and, and we should go down to MCRD sometime. You were in oh, San yeah. Diego. Oh no, no! When you say you're in Wildemar, man, you, you, you probably, yeah. I could probably run. You know, I'm on the other side. I'm over there. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the other side. I'm, yeah. you know, you over there yeah. on the 15. Yeah. I'm on the 215 side uh, yeah. here in uh in Minifee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm far from you, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. we should get I'm together. Only, I'm, I'm a phone call away, man. Yeah, you, you, you know, trust me when I tell you, man. And I'm me right too. there. Yeah, yeah. That's we, right. We, me we, too. Together, Thank you. Man. Just, uh, That's right. You, know, you got somebody right here, man. You know they say you just, just like the and they say just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's all. You're on. <laughs> but Red Wolf, you you absolutely I don't take it for granted. And and God, every day I wake up, God is just so amazing. And he, even like with the interactions that even like tonight, I can see and feel God's hand. Yeah, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Even just like yeah. you and Tommy kind of talking, when as I matured and matured, and I used to try to make things happen. You know what I mean? Because I, I want to help people, want to help, but then the God deals with me too. He's like Leon, I got this. Right. <laughs> you understand okay. what I'm saying? You ain't gotta. I mean, just like Jeff, I ain't talked to, I, I ain't heard from this this young man in a long time. I was wondering what it's, it's been a few years, man. He's he's in South Carolina in my home state. And I said, I, it was just a, I got like a billion um numbers in my phone. And it was almost like God just let and I said, Well, let me I said he ain't gonna show up, but 
I mean, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, he's, it's, I'm serious. It, it was like, I, I just said, I, I just said, this joker, it, it, I saw his name and I said, you know, a lot of times I, and I just, I said, you know what? I'm going to send him the flyer. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to send him the flyer. And it, it's just like, um, and I appreciate you, Reverend Wolf, and you and Tommy, because it's like, we need to act on, act on, when God's talking to us. Boom. That part. You know, because I'm serious, because the other piece is like like Jeff said, Jeff, I'm feeling you. It's it's like it ain't just where you at with, with your background and everything. It's it's on every level. Yeah. It, it's almost like to me, it's like some days it'd be like, God, why am I doing this? What what's you know, but he 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 constantly brings me back to this. Not necessarily this video, boys the men, but bro brethren. Yes. And it's just like we don't. And I don't have answers. I don't know. It breaks my heart. I, I don't have the answers. What what you talk? What you asking, Jeff? What you these people addicted? Huh? I don't. Yeah. But more God said, keep talking to the brothers. Not only keep studying my word, meditating, and listening to me. But Leon, you this is world society, everybody's separated, segregated. You, and it's like, man, people just say hey, they, they don't have time, they're doing this. Well, still work on getting the brothers together to talk. Yes. And when we when we talk, the questions that was asked, God's gonna use us to to, to make a difference. And this is something I'm seeing more and more. It's just like my wife told me to, she, she I'm like, you know, and I said, man, she, she, you can't you can't do everything by yourself. Everybody yeah. knew. It's better to work corporately. <laughs> and Network. sometimes we don't know, but if we spend more time together and time talking, sharing each other's stories, we can come up with some answers. Beehive, Leon, beehive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're 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 the best builders, man. You That's see right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But um Rick, I thank you, man. And I, I know you got stuff going on and you're busy. We That's fine, man. Time to come out, man. And and that you asked me I, and talk yeah, to thank us. you. Yeah. Being here, you know, it's seen and uh mm -hmm. I mean the faces and, and that encourages me mm -hmm. um, to you know lets me know that I'm going down the right path, man. Yeah. And, it, and it's just how things just start falling in place when you go the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like you said, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying you know they just fall. No, there's work. I got when he knocks on the door, you got to open that door. You can't just yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know you got mm -hmm. something I got something I got to mm -hmm. do too. So yeah. yeah. And you, and Reverend Wolfolk, you and Reverend Rap, I appreciate the accountability. You know what I mean? I, I really do. Blessings, blessings, uh, I, D, I, I, I appreciate bless it because it, it, it's needed. Very nice meeting, gentlemen. You know, um, so. Yeah, this, me too. This, this, this is our first one. You know, I know Reverend Rap was like, hey, D, what, when is it? What, 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 what? <laughs> you know, Reverend Wolf, you like, hey, I was like, Okay, we just need Love to it. do it. So, so every month we we need to show up, and you know the plan is the goal is for us. You know, Jeff, <laughs> you can get on a plane quarterly. We want we gonna meet in person, so we we we're, we're not only gonna get together and and um, you know, for the education piece, but you know, while we doing that, we want to break bread and, and bond and network and. Love it. You know, and we're praying that we have some, there's young men that I'm working with right now that they're going through some storms and I'm praying that they, they can come in and connect with you guys and connect with us. And um, not, not a problem. Yeah. So, you know, March, we're planning to do it in person in, in March. And then, so we got enough time. I don't know. Get. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can swing that one, Leon. <laughs> Well, if you can't make March, that's, maybe that's you can little, make that's June. A too, that's a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> so we will do it quarterly, but if you can't make March, maybe you can plan for June. So 
okay, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. yeah, let's, you know, let's, let's keep it within my reach. And you can come out. You, you've had some brilliant ideas. You know, I, I want anything I can do to help you get your ministry, whatever you want to do over there as far as the prison ministry. I think you know God has give you gave you that. So if yeah, God I, gives I, you something, I, 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 don't give I'm up on it. it. I'm feeling it. So you hey, know, don't, don't you give up on yeah. it. We we can figure out how how to make it happen. It's it's just you know, it's it's just a path to get there. Anything's sure. possible. Anything. Yeah. So, well, the book of Habakkuk says this says uh. Write the vision. That's Make it. Plan. All right. Did you write it down? You heard Rev. Did you write it down? I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> write it down. Make it plain. Yep. You already didn't lived it. You didn't lived it. And, now, and, and you constantly writing your book. You know, they always lived say it. we're lived writing it, our book right now. We lived it, tasted it, smelled it, all of right. it. All right, Jeff. Yeah. So I'm going to check in with you and see if you wrote it down in about a week. <laughs> and then watch how God moves. Watch how God moves. Write it down and believe it, and then we'll be believing and praying for it together. Whatever, you know, what God has put on your heart. Because it ain't wrong. It's, it's righteous. And it's needed. You know, we always say that when you ask God something, be prepared, you know, because yeah. he'll come. If you call on him, oh my you know, goodness. see, you got to be careful when you're calling on God <laughs> and tell him to come in, because see, that's just it. See, he coming, you know, and we just got to be prepared of yes. what we asking him. So you got to be willing to receive what it is God wants to do. And that's what that struggle comes from. You know what I'm saying? So you say, Lord, help me with this. Give me discernment. Uh, show me your vision. Show me what it is you want me to do. And then when he starts moving on it, then we get a little nervous about it. We don't think we can do it and we're not capable or equipped to get it done. But if like, you just I, trust that God is yeah. able to do it exceedingly in a... Man, listen, I'm just going to tell you. Just, yeah, trust that he's doing it. Yeah. God is something else. Don't be right. scared of. Don't be scared of. Don't be, scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Black, concentrate on the abundance. And uh, oh, Reverend Ralph, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and 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 go ahead and let them know about your Thursday nights. Y'all on Thursday, you and, and Doctor Glover. Oh yeah, yeah. Please let them know. So, so okay. put your prayers in. Prayer uh, line. Reverend Ralph and and uh, and and Doctor Glover is gonna be on for the prayer line you, you, on Facebook, YouTube, or if you don't oh, want to, yes. you can call in. Yeah, God yeah, answers put prayer. Put prayer request in. Yes. Oh yes, God answers and, prayer. God answers prayers. And there. And uh, Reverend Ralph, I've already heard since y'all did two already. So a friend already said that he, he logged it. He 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 sent a prayer request in, and God's already answered his prayer. The Lord, to God be the glory. Amen. So we Lord. gonna keep believing it and moving forward. Yes, sir. Yeah, Rev. Ralph, you want you want to close us out in prayer? Oh yes. All right, Father God, we are so grateful for this time that we've had together with these brothers. God, we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to hold our brother that's um, presented tonight. God, we ask, Lord, that you continue to give them strength to endure until the end, Lord. God, we pray, Lord, that uh, you would touch each and every brother under the sound of my voice. Bless them with what they stand in need of, Lord, to keep going on in your name. Thank you for it. You can Leon, God, who uh, orchestrated this whole boys to men. God, we pray, Lord, that uh, we reach to wherever you, to higher heights and deeper depths than you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all those uh, present. And God, we just give you the glory for all that you're going to do. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless uh, from the top, top of everyone's head to the soles of their feet, that, Lord, that they walk in the newness of life, Father. 
that you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you can walk in the newness of life. Indeed, another blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, brothers, it was good meeting y'all. I'm sure that Mr. Tommy, yes, you know, you right across the, the drag over there, so I'm sure we'll be getting together <laughs> real soon, man. You know, I can I can PT hey, over there. Let's you do at, it. Man. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can go. I can go. And and I'm gonna take care of on that MCRD. We go down there, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.